you can download it there. And then we're just going to select Backtrack USB. And it does the format automatically for you, which is really nice. We're just going to hit Create. And yes. So right now it's just going to run through all this. And it's going to open up 7-Zip, extract it, and put it on our USB. And it's going to take about 20 minutes. I know it says 50, but it usually takes around 20 minutes for it to be complete, uh, fully complete. So while we're waiting, I guess we can start talking about um, ethics and using these things. So when you are going to start practicing using these things, you have to understand that you absolutely need to gain permission before you start doing anything because you can get in trouble and you probably either will get a fine or maybe even a little jail time if you did some really bad things. What bad things can you do? I mean, you can take down their network for a lot of time. If you, like, DDoS them or something like that and take down their network for even, like, an hour or so, you can get in a lot of trouble for doing something like that. Or if you steal their password, steal any of their information, even though you were just, like, practicing or doing it ever, that can get you in a lot of trouble. <laughs> uh, one of the major examples is uh, a lot of people that do this stuff also play video games a lot. And so, let's say they're playing their game, they're starting to rage, they start to lose, so instead they're just going to DDoS their opponent. <laughs> At that point, you're better off breaking into their house and stealing their Xbox instead of committing a federal offense and DDoSing their Xbox. Really? Yeah, so it's better off if you just gain permission. <laughs> and um, the way I learned it, there's three types of hackers. There's a white hat hacker, a gray hat hacker, and a black hat hacker. So the white hat hacker is someone who gains permission, you know, a licensed penetration tester or a stress tester like that. They gain permission, they get paid, you know, everything's fine, like, they don't get in trouble and stuff. And then there's the black hat hacker, which is, like, someone who does things maliciously, like, they'll break into a network, steal passwords, steal money, like, steal pretty much anything they ever want. And those people go to jail. But the tricky one is the gray hat hacker, is someone who practices on open networks and stuff, but they're not actually trying to do anything bad. And usually, after a gray hat hacker finds a uh, vulnerability, they'll tell them and let them know and try and fix it for them. But you have to understand that the gray hat and the black hat hacker both go to jail, no matter what they did, even if their intentions really? were good, but they still go to jail, which is not fun. So but I guess it's always a good idea to be the legal hacker. Yeah, be a white hat hacker, which is what <laughs> we're going to teach you what to do. And uh, a few things you want you can take advantage of if you want to practice um, is virtualization, so using a VMware player and things like that. And you can open up as many VMs as you want, as long as you have the computer power. And you can just hack those. Basically, you're just going to hack yourself for fun. And it's a good way to train and teach yourself, because you can do pretty much anything you want, because you, you're hacking yourself. You have full permission to do anything you want. So that's what I've been doing lately, is uh, just creating VMs and stuff. And you can download these things off like the Microsoft website, download like a 30-day free trial or something like that, and you just play around with those. And that's what works for me. Which VM player are you using? Uh, VMware Player 6. You Oops. can just download it off their website. Nice. Or you can pay and get VMware Workstation, which is a little bit better, but all you really need is VMware Player. It usually works on Windows, and I know there is a Linux version you can download, and there is a Mac OS one you can download as well. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, and they're all free, so... So what have you been working on this week? This week, um, I've just been playing around with Kali Linux, kind of playing around on my own network, kind of getting used to using uh, Nmap and stuff like that. What's Nmap? Nmap is a port scanner, so what that does is uh, it'll send a bunch of packets over your network, and it will... The highest individual computers, like, kind of seeing which um, ports are open on those computers and which OS's they have and things like that. But uh, you also got to be careful with that because that's also, it's kind of in the gray zone. It's not really illegal, but you can still get in trouble for doing it without uh, permission. But if you're doing it at, like, your house or something like that, you pretty much have full permission, I guess. That's sweet. Yeah. And I've just been doing that, playing around with that. And the cool thing that I found is it finds my cable boxes. It'll find all the computers on the network, and it'll also find, like, your set-top box that you have to watch your TV. Nice. Which I thought was interesting, because those things are also connected to your router, so... I found oh, really? My, yeah, I found my Google, or, like, whatever it's called. Like, your Google TV, I found that. I found you have my, one of those Google TV player things. It's, uh, I've only seen it twice. Pablo yeah. had one, and some other people had them. Yeah. I'd never seen it before. I found that one. Not the Chromecast, but the actual like Google yeah. TV. I didn't even know it still existed. Yeah, so. it's still here. <laughs> I found I found that, and I found my Verizon box. And the cool thing about those is they show up as uh, Linux boxes. So really? They're probably using some Linux distro. To, it's like a SC Linux something yeah. or other. I don't know what they were, but that's what they appear to be. Which is pretty cool. I think I still have them saved, so I loaded up. So yeah, Cali Linux. 
house play this, even though this takes a lot of my room, we'll see it for a short time. See if I can find <laughs> the stuff I got. Ooh, it's gonna restore my virtual machine state. Take a minute. It may not work so if I don't have internet. Sometimes it doesn't work well. But this is Kali Linux, which is pretty much Backtrack 6. I was oh, gonna, sweet. Yeah, I guess that's what you can call it. But um, Yeah, it's the newest version. Somebody was asking me on the on a forum, like, oh, why not Kali? Whatever, I didn't even answer them. Because, uh, you know, if you know anything about it, then obviously you're going to know that Backtrack is Kali and Kali is Backtrack. Yeah. Well, it's probably rebranded for whatever reason, but yeah. I don't know much about the rebranding of that stuff. but. I mean, I was going to do it for Cali, but I just didn't want to try and figure out how to get it to work. Sometimes <laughs> it's just, I already know how to do a backtrack one, so I'm just going to use one of those. Nice. So let's see if I can... Um, exploitation tools... I love the drop-down menus. Like, it's something that I'm not really familiar... Obviously because of the new Unity with the Ubuntu, where it's that whole start menu thing. You know, and I, I mean, I like it, it's good, but it, you know, for the average person, that's not something that you want to be using. It's yeah. just not very easy. <laughs> Alright, let's see if it'll load. Just load on the oh, there we go. So, I'm just going to set the post this myself just to make it easy. Yes. It might not work though because I'm not connected to the internet, but it might. Oh, well, it's going to work yet yeah, because it's for myself. How's this Connecting going? exception? Yeah. It, oh, okay. Yeah. Alright, let's see. It's about halfway done, another 10 minutes, it should be ready to go. This takes about like 2 to 3 minutes to start up, and we can look at all my... I was also just going to talk about how uh, using virtual machines, if you're going to practice, is a lot easier instead of using USBs, because you can open a bunch of your uh, virtual machines open and just practice on those instead of using your USB. Like Even if you're going to use your USB, and let's say you finally become a licensed stress tester, then you're going to use the USB, it's like takes a lot of time to set up, it's very slow, especially since you're using a USB, you have very little memory. But using a virtual machine, you can create pretty much anything you want. As much memory as you want to allocate to it, as big as logical drives as you want to just create. And so here we go. Here's all my stuff that I found from my network. You can do another scan and scan cafe memory, but that's not allowed. So here I found my dad's phone, I found my little brother's laptop, I found my dad's iPad, found my own laptop that I was running the virtual machine on. This is my Verizon box, this is my Google TV box, and I found my Android phone, and then this is the virtual machine itself. So as you can see, you can find a bunch of stuff on here. Wow, that's really cool. And it's pretty easy, just go hosts, uh, in map scan, and you want to do a quick scan with OS detect. And since I know I'm on a 192.168 network, so I just do 192.168.1. And this will search for everything that's star. in that range. Yeah, so it'll search 192.168.1, and then the star represents anything, so it'll scan from 1 to 255. And so as you see, the highest one it found was 102. I think, yeah. And then you hit scan, and it'll scan your own subnet. You want to be careful with this because if you do something like star dot star dot star dot star, you're gonna scan every single IP address, which is not good. <laughs> Why is that not good? It'll take a long time to do, especially since it'll start going over your uh, the internet, uh -huh. and your ISP not might not be happy about that. Uh. <laughs> so you, you you're obviously gonna be watching traffic for anything yeah. like that for sure. So you want to make sure you scan only your own subnet and not everyone in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so it's important because also if you look, that's 255 times four, which is how much is that? Going back into Windows. God, it's so weird. Yeah. This whole Windows 8 thing. Wait, no, that's, and then you got multiply it by the ports, but. You're just gonna scan a bunch of people, and it's not. It's <laughs> gonna take years. Was that to, 65 million? Yeah, it's just gonna take years for you to finish that scan. It's not worth it at all, <laughs> especially since it takes maybe like three to four seconds to scan an individual IP address. So it's not worth your time trying really? to do something silly like that. <laughs> and.
and once we go over like DDoSing and stuff like that, we'll explain why it's really important to make sure you type in the right IP address as well. I guess we can stop there for a little bit as well, since it's going to be another five minutes for us to finish up. Alright, so you can see here, it says installation done, process complete at the very bottom. So we can close this program. What we're going to do now is we're going to turn off my computer and turn it back on and see if we can get the thing to load. Alright. Not to turn it off twice because it resumes hibernation. Actually, I'm just going to take out the battery. That'll make it work better. So we're just going to wait one second for it to fully turn on. So the power lights to go. Now, does this computer have UEFI on it? Uh, I've I haven't gotten to work yet. I know it's there, but my BIOS... Well, it's not good to, if you, you know, have Linux and all. Yeah. All right, so <laughs> That's the worst battery. part about it. Yeah, but... Because then you just can't put a new OS on there, you know, with, with Linux. Yeah. I mean, if there's UF, UEFI in there, it's going to take you however long to figure it out and right. get around it. I have two BIOSes on there, if that makes sense. One is for my NIC card, and the other one's for my motherboard. So if I hook this up into a network, I could get it to do uh, network booting. So I get it to boot over a network, but it's really? another complicated process we can go over another time. <laughs> All right, so I think Sounds horrible. I have three hard drives. I think it's this one. This one. The GBs and the Wi-Fis. There we go. Oh, snaps. Here we go. Wow, so that was really quick. We'll do text mode, so here we go. It's logging in. Doing all that stuff. Oh, it's so hot. Alright, so yeah, this is gonna be backtrack five. Let's give it a minute. Also, yeah, key thing is make sure you do it in a USB 2 port, don't do it in a USB 3. Why is that? I just couldn't get it to work with the USB 3. There was something that it couldn't register, like when it's doing the whole like text stuff. Yeah. It kept pausing at a certain point, saying like a certain driver couldn't be loaded or something like that. Really? Yeah, so just make sure you do a USB 2, it just simplifies things a lot. Huh. Alright, it should be almost done soon. I actually just bought a Transcend USB 3 uh, converter. So you just hit, you type in start X, and it'll start the GUI for you. And here we go. And it'll load all the applications in. There we go. So here we are, we're in backtrack. With my computer. It has all my hard drives in here. Let's see. So yeah, since I don't have TrueCrypt installed on this yet, we can't do it. Wow. We can try and get into my... And that took us volume. maybe 15 minutes. We made a USB with a whole OS that can get Wait. problem solved. Here's my Windows. We've got we've done this before. This is like my Windows drive again, so it's still here. Really? Yep. So we're, you can actually see it. We're in my computer now. And do you have encryption on there? I only have a logical encrypted drive under my... TrueCrypt partition, which is this, but we don't have TrueCrypt installed in here, so we can't try and open it up. Ah, so if you don't have TrueCrypt and you have an encrypted drive, you can't open it. Well, this is yeah, encrypted with TrueCrypt. Okay. And see, here's my backtrack partition where I keep all my ISO files. So I got the Kali ISO. Oh, this is the Kali VM. I got the backtrack ISOs and stuff on here. I got my Windows drive. I got all my Windows stuff in here. One thing we could do next time is um, we could try and decrypt a SAM file. So what a SAM file is on Windows is um, the where they keep your passwords is in the SAM file, all capitals, S-A-M. Okay. And you can't access it while you're booted into Windows. It's like, that was like their big idea for security. Okay. But if you boot into another OS, like Backtrack, for say, you can actually find the SAM files. Let's see if we can find it in here. And you can access it without Windows being opened. Nice. Which is pretty much one of the, it's like a really big security flaw. So we're going to go to... It's a security flaw of, I mean, like, what can you do with it? And you can get the passwords for their Windows machine, so instead of having to boot into backtrack, you can just boot straight into Windows and <laughs> type in their password. <laughs> Alright, let's see. I, That's too good. I think it's somewhere in System32. Let's see if it'll open it up. It's going to take a moment. Maybe Windows has something, because this is Windows 8, so they might have added something with This is though. Windows RE tools. Oh, this recovery tools. Is it some volume information? Uh, let's see what happens. Uh, 
time you can do anything. But this is like, like another key is be creative, be able to like look around and click on things for fun and see what happens. Well, I like that it's in Nautilus. At least it looks like Nautilus to me, the, the file manager. So you're able to, it's kind of, you know, more familiar to those of us who've used the Nautilus theme um, for looking through um, files. So it, it, it's just a little bit more comfortable for Linux users. I've never used Linux, so. Ubuntu is just hot. Yeah. I, don't I know mean, just it's simple. For me as a noob using it, I love it. It's taking forever to open System 32. It's weird. Maybe we can do it for another video, but that's how you make your backtrack USB. So you can start breaking into. Oh, here it is. It actually opened. All right, time to figure. So out. this is the System 32 file. Yeah, this is like the core of Windows. I don't see there's PowerShell and stuff. Now where would this same file be saved? Let's see. Is it just there? Got the smartphone. <laughs> Real time Googling. Yeah. <laughs> Team Canada. Print Sam file. Config, so system 32, config, say I'm sorry, system 32. <laughs> I love how easy this is, it's so good. Uh, and all these Windows users think they're safe. Okay, so here's Sam. Okay, so yeah, then we want to use, this is where we'd use a cracker to try and get into these Sam files, but we'll see if the Is there a cracker that comes with? Uh... I wouldn't be surprised if there is. Let's see. Here, let's try this. We'll see if there's an application we can use. Backtrack, uh, vulnerable exploitation tools, uh, physical exploitation, Arduino. Let's see what happens. Okay. What is this? <laughs> open. Let's see if we can open a file. Oh, wow. Basics. Uh, digital. This is actually a guide on how to do it, so... Alright, um... <laughs> you just pulled up a guide on your random Google search. Alright, so... Copy the file simply. You can also use a program called pwdump2. So they, they use canEnable for this, but I... Does it have canEnable on here? I've heard of canEnable before. I think the government was using it. I don't remember, what is it? Um, I know one of the things you can use it for is, it's a, you can use it for a man in the middle attack. Okay. I know it's one of the, what a man in the middle is, is basically you pretend to be someone else. By, um, so basically, when someone, let's say someone is trying to connect to like their bank account or something like that. One of the man in the middle is, is you pretend to be the bank account. And so they'll connect to you, and then you forward that information to the bank. And so you'll, the bank will send you a password request. You take the password request and forward it back to the person you're connected to. Yeah. They'll type in their password, send it to you. You take their password and send it back to the bank. So it will appear that they logged into the bank. And then you have their password for... Nice. The bank. Oh, password forensics. Oh, Sam dump. That seems about right. Oh, no. It's a... <laughs> it's a terminal program. All right. Can you drag and drop the file into the thing? Let's see how to use Sam dump. <laughs> um, this is why we should probably read the backtrack guys before we do this. No, not at all. This is how everybody else is going to learn, so we might as well learn like everybody else, where yeah. you're just going to do it and figure it out yourself. Alright. So, introduction Sam dump is written by Adam Cecil. Sam dump is a passage forensics tool. Alright, how to open Sam dump. We got that. Alright, so view the partition disk using F disk dash L. So F disk space dash L. Alright. Here it shows all the partitions, so let's 
make this full screen and make it easier. I don't know how to do a full screen on Windows 2. So you just pull it up. Just pull it to the top? Yeah. Oh my gosh, Windows 8 took that feature. Like usually you do that and you pull it all the way up and it does it. Do this. No. It might not have that just because it's a the style of in and I guess let's see this so this is my first one this is my Windows hard drive because I know it's 750 gigabytes yeah and then let's see partition all right this is my this is the second one where I keep my ISO files on and then this is the USB because it's only it's not even a gig, or it's like just under a couple or it's it's putting in megabytes because it's not full enough to make Nice. Gig. So create a mount. So next command you want to use is mkdir space slash mnt or mnt for mount and then Windows. So all right, I guess I did the right thing. So mounting your NTFS permission. So command here is mount dash T space NTFS dash. Do I want to type in mine? Or is it typing in? Oh, you want to. Okay, I think this is still right. 3G uh, slash dev slash SDB1 slash mount again slash windows. Alright, I don't think I typed that in right. <laughs> I don't know why it's not doing anything. Oh, I. Oh yeah, so the first command was make directory mount windows, and then the second one, I guess I mounted it? So I, so I made a directory and then I connected to it, I guess, is what I did there. Okay. Because I know MK dir, MK dir is make directory, so we made a directory, and I guess we're, I guess we didn't use the CD command? Alright, so CD, so now we're going to go to that directory, I guess. Okay, I guess I didn't make the directory. I don't know. This <laughs> Be Google Brave. This this stuff does take a lot of time to figure out how to use. Okay, so maybe because it's not called Windows. What is it called here? Disk Dev. Uh, SDA? Maybe. Because that's where it is. Let's see if I can make the directory again. Make directory slash. Let's try... I'm not going to remake the dev directory. Do you know what the desktop is for Linux is? What the desktop name is? I have no clue. You don't know? All right. So, hmm. Command used here is... Oh, um, see. I think what the problem was, I didn't do the second command right. So, mount dash T. And then we want NTFS dash 3G. And then we want to change the... So the first one is dev, but the second one is SDA for my hard drive, because I think theirs is SDB1. But oh, our, okay. So we're going to change that to... Okay, that should work that time. So CD. Okay, now we're there. Alright, so now we're in my Windows hard drive, because... Yes, I'm pretty sure, because now it wants us to CD Windows uh, System32 slash config. So now we're going to the configuration files. Oh no. <laughs> uh, is it changed for. Oh, it should be just Windows. Slash so system. Because it's trying to go through my hard drive right now. Yeah. <laughs> but at least the tool is working. So the yeah. concept is is, uh, is correct. Yet. Yeah, we're not there yet. We're almost there. We can try another tool if we have enough time. All right, so a couple more minutes before it shuts off on us. Yeah, we'll close this. Due time. to the European Union restrictions on video recording. Right, let's go back to backtrack. Um, not privilege. Oh, what's a password attack? Physical attack? That's what we're doing right now, I guess. SU crack. 
Oh man, this is easy now. It has all the steps listed out in the terminal. Oh before wow. You can start using it. All right, so that's all the commands already listed, which is really nice. Okay, but I guess I don't have enough screen space to view it all. <laughs> okay. Name, SU Track is a multi-threaded Linux Unix tool for brute force cracking of a local user account via SU. So after SU Crack, uh, SU Crack is a multi-threaded Linux tool. Okay. All right, SU Crack allows reading passwords from STDN in the case that you use it. All right. Print help, NT code. Is this? This might be for breaking into another Linux user account, maybe. Okay. If it's breaking into a Windows account. All right, we'll just Google how to use to crack. This is pretty cool. Yeah. I'm surprised that all these tools are in there in one single OS. It just gives you the ability to get so much more stuff done. Especially if you're a super secret squirrel that maybe, you know, somewhere, you know, where you don't have stuff, you don't have materials, you don't have nothing, and you need to get stuff done, and you're waiting for two and a half weeks for some team to come and help you, well, screw it. Just download Backtrack, call up your people in the States, and, you know, figure out how to get into somebody's uh, hard drive because you need to get problem solved. Yeah. That's how I see it being used. Because a lot of times, the government doesn't give you the people that you need to have to do your job, and so you just have to do it. And that might mean you just downloading Backtrack yourself and using it on a classified system if you have to and getting the approval from your command and getting the problem solved which is getting the information so then you can go and waterboard the bad guy who is going to kill however many people okay. alright so I guess to, oops, to use suit crack I have to make a so let's try this suit crack word list dot this is a different type of terminal I guess <laughs> I'm very confused. It's almost like a GUI terminal. It's really weird. Alright. I, oh, I guess I... S path to Sue. Oh my gosh. Alright, we're going to try a different tool because this one's too difficult. <laughs> what is the advantage of Backtrack? There's so many of these tools that you get to play around with. OS Backdoors. No, let's not do that. Maybe that seems right. We like to exploit tools. Physical exploitation. Catulia. Oh, see, so yeah, this is another one of these. A lot of these tools have like a terminal that'll open up for you, mm -hmm. and they'll have some of these things open up. Like, see, they want you to follow you on Twitter. Oh, or they want great. <laughs> and yeah. they have their code on Google that you can look at. That's cool. So, Catulia is a tool to ease usage of Teensy and Pwnage. Like, what the heck? That's how these people talk. <laughs> Let me just. <laughs> Like, okay, I understand you. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, payloads for Windows. One. Alright, choose target. Uh, I want I want to do one. Alright, add an ad. Oh, we can just add an admin. Change the default DNS server. Man, these things are scary. Alright, so. Uh, we could add an admin, which is pretty much instant access to everything on your Windows machine, I guess. Mm -hmm. We'll just add an admin since it's easy. Press enter. All right, so enter username for the user to be added. Let's name it Wolf. And password, we'll just leave it blank. All right, now copy the generated dot output user add to your Tenzi device. What's a, what's a Tenzi device? That's my <laughs> question. Oh, am I, not, am I allowed to use your name for, or Wolf? Just use Wolf, yeah. Yeah, all right. It's probably a, it's a, probably a Twitter account. Uh, This is oh, it's a USB thing. Oh, if I had another, oh, I do have another USB. It's okay. Okay, Teensy. Oh my gosh, look at these things. Teensy device three. These are like, you could describe them as like Raspberry Pis, I guess. Okay. The Teensy is a complete USB-based microcontroller development system, a very small footprint, capable of implementing many of types of projects. So all programs done. Yeah, so it's like a, a Raspberry Pi, I guess you could say. Something like that. That's really cool. So, I guess it created a user, and then we awesome. can put it on there. I think there was another tool that... Uh, we do have enough time, because now it just re-recorded. You're tuned into Death Metal Chronicles! Thanks to the EU and its restrictions on video recording, this video has been split up into multiple videos, so now I had to use it 15 different times inside of OpenShot to make it into one video. Yay for the EU! Alright, so welcome back. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, so what do we have here? Generate and replace with custom EXE, generate and replace ISO image, mass view with three ponage. What does that even say up top? It's some aside. Mascularity team? It's null security? Null security, yeah. So, like, ASCII, or I, don't, I call it ASCII, because I just like the, I don't like ASCII, it doesn't sound right. ASCII is, sounds better, in my, in my opinion. <laughs> but, like, yeah. That's cool, I like that. It's almost like yeah. those death metal t-shirts with, like, unreadable text. <laughs> it just looks cool, you know? Yeah, like, people, people who make these things love this kind of stuff. <laughs> Alright, so, it's a Metasploit payload injection tool for sand disk devices. Oh, we have sand disk devices here, don't we? Yeah, one of those. Generate, oh, so... Although it has magic lantern, we can't do anything with it. Oh, yeah. I put a magic lantern firmware on it. Let's just press 6. See what happens. Let's just read about them. So it's a tool designed to automate automate injecting executables to Sandus smart USB devices with default U3 software installed. This uh, is performed by removing the original ISO file from the device and creating a new ISO with, with auto run features. Disclaimer CI. This is important. This goes back to ethics. Disclaimer. This is only for testing purposes and can be used anywhere. Strict consent has to be given. Do not use for illegal or illegal purposes. Period. Nice. These people are serious. Like, they do not want you playing around with these things. They don't want some kid going to their friend's house and breaking into their friend's computers for fun because people can get into a lot of trouble for these things. Well, yeah, and it, this is also, you're included in the, the global network of the internet, you know, and the ISPs literally do control um, what you get to do over their network. I mean, yeah. you enter into that contract, you probably should be reading it, and you definitely should be getting with an ISP who doesn't want to restrict you if you have that option. Yeah, because I'll let you know right now, there are people out there who are better than you, and they will find you. Oh, yeah. Like, this is the kind of work that I do. Yeah. My job is to find bad guys, and if you might be one of the bad guys, uh, you might be on my radar. Yeah, all right, let's see. Password text. I guess, let's see, this is... I have an NVIDIA card in my computer, so let's going to see what happens when I launch this. All right. Uh... I guess this is another package we're cracking. I guess it's gonna go through my NVIDIA card, but I have no clue. <laughs> so we're gonna Google o -L OCL Hashcat. Okay. Let's see what happens again. More Google Foo before we get started. <laughs> so OCL Hashcat. All right. Advanced password recovery. All right. Let's see what happens. So that's what OC Hashcat is? OCL Hashcat? Yeah. So let's see. Uh, uh, all right. So hashcat. Oh, it has all the password algorithms in here. Holy crap! MD5, SHA1. Oh man, look at all this stuff. <laughs> all right. So it's been tested. It should work on 32 and 64-bit people. So that's us. We're a 64-bit machine. Yeah, it has all the hashes, uh, MD4, MD5, SH1, SHA256, so I forget what one, what Windows uses. So let's see, cracking a W, oh, so this is for, um... Web keys, yeah. WPA keys. Well, we're not connected to the internet, so I guess it won't work, but... A series of tubes? Yeah, so this is for breaking into routers and stuff, so if you can connect to someone's router but you don't have their password, this is what this is used for. Oh, nice, okay. But with this is awesome because well, you know, obviously you're doing the permissions. Where you do it in Linux directly in Linux through the terminal, you're gonna have a lot of problems, and it's gonna well, it'll, it'll take a long time. It'll be able to do it, but it'll it'll just take a long time. Yeah. All right. What else we got here? Privilege escalation. I wanted to create another admin user, but I guess it didn't work. Forensics reporting tools. I mean, it's in miscellaneous. This is really cool. Yeah. Maintaining access. Oh, it's backdoors. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Well, actually, I'm running Windows 8, so there might not be any released yet. <laughs> Never mind. Reverse engineering this. Uh, Java new. So. Oh, and it already has a wine. Is not an emulator on there. That's cool. Yeah. Let's see. RFID tools. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, it's got a lot of stuff in here. I don't know, like, we already did what we were planned for the episode. This is kind of like the unplanned <laughs> have fun time. The unplanned have fun time with the Death Metal Chronicles. Yeah. It's snowing outside. Where's your Where's your kitty? <laughs> <laughs> 
So yeah, there's wire. Oh, Bluetooth. That'd be kind of fun. Jack someone's like Bluetooth speaker. Play whatever music you want. <laughs> That'd be perfect in school. Yeah. <laughs> We probably wouldn't talk about though. We're talking about ethics. Do things work. <laughs> Do good things, kids. Do good things, yes. <laughs> Maybe I'll bring my Raspberry Pi and we can try and break into my computer with that. Because we can use. Sweet. Yeah. Because I don't know how to use the rest of this. But... Okay. We well, go. that's the end of this episode for Death Metal Chronicles. This is Death Metal Chronicles episode number nine. Backtrack number two how to tutorials with Wolf and. Kyle. Hope you guys enjoy. Please subscribe. We need more subscribers. We have four subscribers. So the hundred and something people of you people who watch the video, you should be subscribing. Because if you don't, we will come to your house and track you down. And in my beer. Have fun, guys. Yeah, yeah.